Uker Tov, and here is today's Daf Yomi, the Daf Yomi for Meseches Nazir Daf Chaf Hey. We're going to start on the bottom of Chaf Dawad Amabez on the bottom line, where the where with a quotation from a Mishnah. According to the commentaries, it's not our Mishnah, but the Mishnah of Ewa, that the Mishnah says that if a person died and he left behind, you will most assume him the person left behind money and which had been which had been left aside for a pool of sacrifice, but, but he didn't designate which money goes for which sacrifice, Yipul and Nidava. Then under those circumstances, the money goes for Nidava, it goes for voluntary offerings. So the Gemara questions this. Gemara says, why does the money go for Nidava? Why is the money going for Nidava? Why is it going for a voluntary offering? Doesn't that money in the case of the nazir, it has the money has nazir has uh, a, a person is left behind money for a, a shlamim uh, or and a chata. So since the money has the chatas mixed in, so therefore how can the money go for nadava? The money of a chatas has to go to yama melech. So the gemara explains two answers to this question. So the first answer is the question uh, is the answer of Rabbi Yochanan. I'm Rabbi Yochanan halacha he ben nazir. Rabbi Yochanan says this is halacha. Alcha Moshe Misinai Toso says, Alcha Moshe Misinai, it's just a straight out law. You can't argue with it. It's a law from Sinai. It's the two men, Yippu and Adav. I'm reading the Toso said, if their money was just collected and wasn't specified for which one is which, then it falls for Nadav. And even though to make Chatos Muravimban, says Tosos, even though the money of Chatos Muravimban, it's, uh, it's, uh, uh, um, it's nevertheless going to be the case. That we're going to say the money goes for goes for Nidava. And the Tosus can, continues to me the Rabba come on, and from the statement of Rabba later on, uh, we're going to learn Mukhacha, it's going to be proved to should make Khatas Davkamu Rabban. That it's a specific law, only when the Khatas money is mixed in, then we're going to say that this Allah Moshmi Sana will take effect, that the money will go to a Nidava. But if the Deme Ola and the Deme Shla are there by themselves without the chatas, we're not going to say it goes for an adava, but then it goes half for an ola and half for a shlamim. So now that's the first answer. The answer of Rabbi Yochanan is, it's just halacha Moshe Misinai. We have no explanation, whereas Rish Lakir says, it's based upon the Pasuk. The Pasuk says, the Pasuk, the Pasuk says that you should bring your sacrifices, all your vows and all your offerings should be brought. So what does this mean? That Torah Amra, that the Torah is telling us by teaching us this thing, the Torah is teaching us the halacha, that most are neder yiel and adava, that if you have leftover money that you set aside for a neder, that that leftover money goes for an adava. And so therefore, since, as Tosus explains, kol karbonos nazir bin neder heim bayin, that all of the karbonos of the nazir are really, uh, they're really a neder because she, the person made a vow, even the chatas is a, basically a neder, even though a chatas can't be voluntary. But since he made a vow to be a Nazarite, then the effect of it is he has to bring us a, a chatas. And, and so therefore, and so therefore, that's what Rish Lakish is saying, that since this is a combination of a neder, anything that's left over from a neder is a pasuk is telling us, yeah, when it goes for the dava. So the Gemara says, well, Bishlam, or Rabbi Yochanan, it makes sense. According to Rabbi Yochanan, his, svara, his opinion is, it's Allah HaMoshim Sinai, Benazir, it's Allah HaMoshim Sinai, specifically by a Nazarite, that the leftover money goes for an Adava, Amtu Ahachis, assuming him for Rosh That's why Rabbi Yochanan says that this Allah applies by money that is assuming that it was that was collected and designated for that, even though it wasn't specified which one. But if the money had been specified, that's not the Lacha Moshe Misina. And so therefore, the, the Chatos money will have to go to the Yama Melch, to the sea. El Reish Lakish, but according to Reish Lakish, it's based upon a puzzle, that all the extra money from the Nidarim goes towards, goes towards a Nidava. Well, if that's the case, my year is assuming and why is it the case just money assuming even if Russian should be the extra money that goes to the Yama, that goes to the Nadava. why is it only if it's the money that had not been specified specifically it should even be if the money had been specified for an that it should go towards an Nadava. so therefore the Gemara gives an answer says the Gemara Amarava 
mefurash and lamatis amris. We cannot say this then by right, a case of money mefurash and why? Because kfar paska tana de be because we already have a separate teaching. We have a separate ruling from the tana de be rishmal that's based upon the pasuk. The pasuk says, raka da shecha asher yiyu lecha undarecha that all your sacred animals and your vows tisa you shall pick up uvata amakom asher yifchar Hashem. That's what the Pasuk says. You should pick them up and take them to the place that God has selected. So what did Rabbi Shmuel do with this verse? He says that what is this referring to? That the verse is referring to the offspring of the Kachim. Utmurasam. So what's an offspring of a Kachim? Let's say Achatas has a a child, so that's called the offspring of a chadas. So Tamura is if you take an animal and you're not allowed to do this, it's against the Torah to do this, but if you do this, this is the halacha, you exchange it, you say, this animal is in exchange for this one, so therefore, let's say you have the offspring of the kachim and the Tamuram, that what are you referring to? That it has to be, the Prophet says, you shall pick up and you shall take to the place that God selected. Matakanatan so what are you supposed to do with this? So, so what are you supposed to do with these animals? So what should you do with these animals? So let me just read the Tosas. Raka the Shecha Yiluach, the Tamura, the Reish Barak El Kachim, Darish Raka the Shecha Elu Tamuros. This refers to Tamuros. If the will be for you, these refers to the Vados. And so, therefore, what are we supposed to do with these animals? So it comes along Rabbi Shmuel and he says, "Ma What is what is what are we supposed to what are we supposed to do with these animals? And so, so what are we supposed to do if you have an offspring of a of a shlamim or an ola? Tisa uvata makom asher yifchar Hashem that they're not any different from a, a regular animal. So if you have a, an offspring of a of a of an Ola or a Shlamim. Uh, so what are you supposed, or a Tamura. So what are you supposed to do? You take them to the temple. That's all you're supposed to do. So I might think you should do with them just like you're supposed to do with the Chatas, that you take up this animal to the base of Bechira. You take it up to the base of Mikdash and you, and you, and you uh, withhold from them water or food so that they will die. I might think that that's what you should do with them. Verse says, you shall bring them for an oa. To tell you, just like you, you act with an oa, so too you should act with its exchange animal. Just like you engage with the shlemim, so too you should engage with their offspring. So I might think that this is the same halacha, that if you have the offspring of a chatas, or the Tamura of an Asham, a Chat is a female, Asham is a male. I might think that you do the same thing, that you could bring it as a carbon and you're allowed to bring it as an altar, Talmud Loma Rak. So that's Divi Rabbi Shmuel. So Rabbi Shmuel says, the Rabbi is explaining that Rabbi Shmuel is saying, what's the reason why if it was Mos Mufurashin, if it was money that was specified, we don't bring that as a specific Nidava, because the Pasuk is saying, the Pasuk tells us you bring it up as an offering in the temple, that's only by an or Shlomo. But if it's a Chatos, the money was specified for a Chatos, and in the Vlados or the Tamuros, then for, for a Chatos or an Asham, those, those animals cannot be brought as an offering. A Chatos has to die, and the Asham, we'll see, has to graze. So, so that's the verse that Rabbi says in the, from Rabbi Shmuel, where Rabbi Kiva says, We don't need this Pasuk, Omer. The Pasuk tells us. What does the verse say? The verse says, You shall bring them as an offering to God. It is an Asham, an Asham Hu. So what does this mean? So Rabbi Kiva says, what does that mean? That it shall remain an Asham. That's what Rabbi Kiva says. So what does that mean? That you bring the Asham, only the Asham itself, and not an, another animal that is the exchange of the Asham. And so therefore you cannot bring the Vlados or the Tamuras of the Asham. And so we see from this price, both according to Rabbi Shmuel and according to Rabbi Kiva, that the extra money, that the extra money that's left over from Achatos cannot be brought as an offering. That the extra money from the uh, chatos, 
the or an extra chatos does not get brought as an adava, that it goes and it dies. And so therefore it's the same thing that the extra money goes to the Yamamel, the extra chatos has to die, and the extra money goes to the Yamamel. And so therefore, Rich Lakish can't learn out from this pasuk about Maus Mufurashim because the money that was designated for the chatos goes to the Yamamel. So therefore, it's only by Maus Asuman that we could say this halacha. So just to summarize what we said, because I know that we said a lot, but I want to, it's a confusing uh, if, this is an intro, if this is a new topic. So the basic idea is that we're saying that if there's money, assuming if there's money that was collected for a Nazir, but we didn't specify which carbon it would go for, the extra money goes for an Adava. What's the reason? So it's based upon the fact that Yochanan says, Halacha Moshe Misinai. Rish Lakish says it's based upon a verse that it says, Lachon Nedrem, Lachon Nedvosam. That the Moser Nadava, Moser Nadava goes to uh, Nadava. So then the Gemara asks the question. Well, I understand according to Rabbi Yochanan why we say the most that it applies to most assuming and not most for Russian. That's Allah Moshe Misinai. But why, according to Rachel Akish, do we say it only applies to most assuming and not most for Russian? And Gemara says, well, because it's the, 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 the Rabbi explains both because both according to Rabbi Shmuel and Rabbi Akiva, we have a verse that tells us that we only say this halacha as it relates to. Uh, that the Vladas and the Tamuros can only be brought as it relates to the O and the Shlamim. But as it relates to the Chatas, the Vladas and the Tamuros, the offspring or the exchange cannot be brought. The Chatas has to be directly connected to its sin, has to have a very strong relationship. And so therefore you can't bring the offspring or the exchanged animals. And so therefore the Chatas cannot be brought. And so too, its money would have to go to the Yamamel. So if it was Maus for Russian, it would have to go to the Yamamel. So the Gemara says, so the Gemara explains, Yachol Yahweh Mubay Sabachira. So the Gemara says, anyway, so the Gemara goes on, Katani, we learned this law in the Brisa. We learned in the Brisa that after we say from the Pasik that the O and the Shalom go up to the base of Mikdash, I might think, Yachol Yahweh Mubay Sabachira, be money my mind, Mumazam Bishwal Yashem. So I might think. You take the O and the Shlomim up to the base of Mikdash, but you just withhold the money and the water from them so that they die. You hold the food and the water from them so that they die. Talmud Omer, the verse says, ola secha. It says, you shall bring your O, you shall bring it as a carbus. Amai. So the Gemara says, why do we need this Pasuk to tell us that you bring, you actually bring the Vladas and the Tumuras of the Oa and that you don't withhold them water? Why do we need a specific Pasuk to teach us this? Of Vlad Chatasu de Gemarina and Ba. Mamisa, this law that the that the offspring has to die, that's only a din in the chatas. Why would we think it's a din in the Ola and the and the Shlamim? So Gemara says, Ilav Kra, oh, no, if we didn't have this halacha Moshe Misinai about if we didn't have this Pasuk about the Vlad Khatas, I would have said, Hava Minan, I would have said Vlad Khatas for Komakum. I would have said that the Vlad Khatas you can kill anywhere, that you let it die anywhere, that the Vlad Khatas goes anywhere, meaning to say it doesn't have, it, you can, it, not specifically in the temple. Whereas the, the offspring of the Tamura, of the Shlomim and the Ola, I might have saw, said that you have to kill them specifically in the base of Mikdash. Kamashmo and Delo, no, so that's what we're learning. And from this Pasuk, we're saying, no, they can come up and they be brought as Mizbeach, even though the Allah HaMosh Mishina is only by the Chathas, that the Chathas, that the offspring of the Chathas dies. We might have thought that you have to kill the offspring of the Vodas and the Tamuros, even though you don't shach them and bring them as a carbon, but we might have thought that they die anywhere in the base of Mikdash, but they have to be in the base of Mikdash. So we're saying, no, they get brought as a carbon. That's what the Pasuk is teaching us. Katani, so then the Gemara says, let's analyze this price. Uh, what does the price say? Yacho af Vlad. Chatos utemuros Ashem. I might think that you could also bring the offspring of the Chatos and the Tamura, the exchange of the Ashem. The Ashem is a male. So I might think that you also bring the, that offspring as a carbon, Tamaloma rock. So that it says rock to teach us that only the offspring of the O and the Shlomim that you could bring, but the offspring of the Chatos and the Tamuros, they go, the Chatos dies and the Ashem goes for grazing. So the Gemara says, I don't know why do you need a verse for this. We already learned it out from Allah Moshe Misinai. Really, it's saying, if you have Allah Moshe Misinai, it's really a question on the one who says, Why are you saying Why are you saying Allah Moshe Misinai? We have a Pasuk. Didn't we learn, Don't we learn that the offspring of a Chatas goes for death? So if that's the case, so that's the case. 
if that's the case, why do we need a Pesach to tell us that the offspring of the Chafas goes to death? Gemara says, Achinami, you're right. We don't need a Pesach to tell us that. Ukra la'ashem huda'asa. The Pesach is not teaching us about the Chafas. The Pesach is teaching us that the, off, that the exchange of the Temura goes to death and it's not brought as a Korban. That's all it's teaching us. So let me just pause for a second and say, what are we talking about here? That is, a, you know, on the one end, it seems incomprehensible. We don't have a chata, we don't have an asham, but it's a very, very deep idea. The notion is that if a person commits a sin and he wants to bring a carbon, then, then he can't bring an offspring of that carbon that he designated. Why? Because when the person pours his heart out on the chata, he designates the animal as a sin offering. He has to have a real connection with his atonement and it, can, and it can't be uh, tangential. And it, can't, it, can't be, uh, it can't be attenuated. It has to be really powerful. If we want to use a carbon as a way of atonement, we have to put our heart and, and soul and focus on how we're changing our ways. And that's why the chatas, the relationship with the chatas has to be much stronger than the ola and the shlamim. So the Gemara says, but, but why do we need a positive to teach us that the ashram also is going, that the offspring it cannot be brought. Asham nami elkasagami relies in an asham also alach bashmi sinai. So didn't we learn this? So, so we call sheilu bechatas may saba asham roa. Don't we have alach bashmi sinai? Anything where the chatas dies, then in that circumstance, and we know that there are five cases of the chatas that they go to die. A chatas that was over a year old. A chatas whose owner died, a chatas that you already received an atonement for. So we, since we already have these cases of a chatas that goes to die, so if that's the case, why do we, what are the, what are the five cases, by the way, the offspring of a chatas, the chatas that's over a year old, the chatas whose owner died, a chatas whose owner achieved an atonement already, and the tamura of a chatas. So we already know Allah Musina that anytime where the Khatas dies, that the Asham goes to graze until it gets a blemish. Uh, and then you sell it and you bring for, with its money an Ola offering. Uh, so if that's the case, why do we need a Pasik? So the Gemara explains Ella Imi El Khasa if we're just relying upon Allah Musina, I have Amina Hil Khasa, be Krivale, or Khaivale Kum. I might have thought, yeah, it's Allah Musina that the Asham has to graze. But if you ended up bringing the animal, you haven't violated an assay. Kamash Milan, cross. So the Pasuk is telling us the Makrivay Karmali Basay that if you bring such a carbon, you have in violation of an assay, you violate, violate a positive commandment. We also learned in the Brahsa, Rabbi Akiva says, Ainotzarach. Rabbi Akiva said he argues for Rabbi Shmuel, who learns out. What does Rabbi Shmuel learn out? Rabbi Shmuel learns out from the word rock that only the offspring of the Tamur and the Chat, the, the only the offspring and the Tamur and the Chat and the Asham are not brought. And Rabbi Akiva says, we don't need to learn out from this verse. It teaches us an asham, which, which we learn from that. That only the asham can be brought and not its tmura. So the Gemara, so Rabbi Kiva says, we learn that from that pasuk. We don't need the word rap. So the Gemara says, but again, why do we, we ask the same question, Rabbi Akiva? Why does Rabbi Kiva need a pasuk? Gemara Gemarino law. Don't we have a lachamo shemisina, a specific law? Call shavachatas mesa. Anything where if the chatas would, would die, i.e. by an tmura, by Asham Roa, by the Asham who just grazed. So the Gemara says, You're right. Rabbi, Rabbi Akiva says that. So Rabbi Akiva says, The Pasuk is coming to teach us only the Allah of Rav. What does Rav say? Let's say there was such a carbon Asham that it has to go and graze, uh, meaning so you can't bring it as an, as an offering. What are the reasons, let's say its owner died, or let's say it was lost and he took a shenishapu bow of it, it took another, uh, it took a, um, he, he, the owner already brought a carbon and so therefore it was found. And so now what do we do? You, you let it graze until it gets a blemish and then you bring with its money an ola, but before it got a blemish on it. So this is the law. This is why Rav Huna Amarav is telling us we need this basuk. He's telling us, that but now you slaughtered it and you slaughtered it for the purpose of an ola kosher. We're going to say that under those circumstances, since its money would have eventually fallen to an ola anyway after God of blemish, so we're going to say it's going to be a kosher offering. So, so under those circumstances. So therefore, the Gemara says, Taima Denitak, what's the reason that if you slaughter it for Noah, uh, that we're going to say it's, it's kosher, it's because it was given to be grazing. Halonitak, 
but let's say it was an asham by itself and had not been set out to pasture yet, lo, then we're going to say, we're not going to say this law. And if you take an asham and slaughter from the law, it's no good. So then, so the Amar Kra, Rabbi Akiva learned this out. And the fact that the verse says, asham hu, babaya so yet, has to remain an asham until it's slaughtered. Okay, so now we've explained, again, summarizing, that we've said what, that both Rabbi Yishmael and Rabbi Akiva have a Pasuk, and they learn out, Rabbi Akiva learns out, Rabbi Shmuel learns out from the word rock that only the Tamura and the Chata, some of the Asham are not brought, and Rabbi, and Rabbi Akiva learns it out from the fact that it says Asham who? In both cases, we ask, why do we need a Pasuk? It's Allah, 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 So according to Rabbi Yishmael, is to teach us the Allah that it's to teach us, it's to teach us the halacha that we might have thought that you're still allowed to bring it as a chat, you're not in violation of an assay. And according to Rabbi Kiva, it's to come and teach us the law that you can only bring that. When do we say an ashram that's brought is, is okay, is kosher as an ola, only if it had been set out to pasture. If not set out to pasture, it's not going to be kosher. And then the Gemara tells us, let's go back to look at this law of Moshe Misinai. That most of the din of Rabbi Yochanan, that the most assuming will fall to an adava. So that's the din of uh, Rabbi Yochanan. Welcome, what should we see now? That most assuming goes to an adava if the owner dies. So Amar Mar, Halacha Ibn Nazir. So he says that this is how, so Rabbi Yochanan taught this. Halacha Moshe Misinai by Nazir, that the, if you have most assuming, it goes to a uh, goes to an adava. So Amar says, What do you mean? It's just Halacha Moshe Misinai by a Nazir, Vesuaka, but that's it. But Tanya, but didn't we learn in the price of a shower? Chai vekinin shebetora. Though all these, all the other kinin in the Torah, the kinin are the birds, the oa and the chatas. So whoever has to bring an oa v'yored, it says in the Torah that if you're wealthy, you bring an animal, and if they're poor, they bring the two birds, the shnei Torah and the shnei b'nei One for an oa, one for chatas. So examples of this are mitzora. And uh, Yoledes. So, it, so it says in the, so it says in the bright. So, and all chayvekinin she free shu malus lekinim or top of chafav amaral. If you separate the money for their birds, ratzel laviba and chatas behema. So, under those circumstances, ratzel laviba and chatas behema yavi. And let's say you had separated the money on behalf of the birds, and you say this is for my tzaras. And afterwards, the person became wealthy, and now they have to bring a carbon ashir which is an animal that comes from the chatas or an animal from the oa. And you're not going to fulfill your obligation with the birds anymore. So we say under these circumstances, that if you want to bring from the money, the chatas behema, you could bring it, yavi. And if you want to bring the money, oas behema, yavi. If you want to bring the money for, uh, from all this money in oas behema, you could bring it because he didn't say specifically, this is for a chatas, this is for an oa. He didn't specify. And so therefore he can, and so therefore he can bring from them he didn't, he never said, I'm going to bring both a chatas and both an oa. So therefore, he could bring from them either a chatas or an oa. But let's say this person mays, let's say this person dies, and let's say after this person dies, he had the money and he hadn't designated each one for a chatas or an oa. We say from here specifically that the money goes for an adava. And so it's not just a din by the nausea that if you have most assuming it goes for an adava, we see from here it's the same thing by him. By the Kenan for a Mitzora or Yoledis, by the O of a Yoraid. Gemara says, ta, the Gemara's answer is, Tana Nazir, Vechai Ve Kenan did Damaway. So it, the Gemara says, the answer is, we say the law by a Nazir, it's a law of Nazir. And also by the anybody who has to bring Chai Ve Kenan, that the, has to bring these pair of birds to Damaway because it's similar to the Nazir. So, so anything that's similar to the Nazir. And so therefore, what's the comparison? That just like the Nazir brings two carbonos for one thing, what the Nazirs actually bring car- two, three carbonos. But mean to say anybody who brings uh, uh, more than one carbon for something. So therefore, we're going to say, whereas most assuming it goes for Nitava. So that's Awaha Moshe Misinai. So we'll stop the recording here. If anybody has any questions, I'm happy to address the questions. And, Sounds uh, like all.